I've been asked a couple of times recently how to create a glossary in SAP Enable Now. So here's a quick video on how to do exactly that. So um, creating glossary is very easy. First thing I need is a group to put my glossary definitions in. So I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to do it outside of my overall um, training delivery group because I don't want it accidentally being included in the trainer as is. So I'm going to create it here outside of that group. I'm just going to create a group which I can call whatever I like, but I'm just going to call it glossary because then it's easy to find. Now, um, within that, you might want to keep things organized. Um, I'm going to create a separate group for each letter um, just because it makes it easier to find content, A, B, C, etc., etc. If you import a glossary from a comma separated values list, it will automatically create these for you. But for now, I'm just going to have an A and a B. And under A, I'm going to create my first glossary definition. So, new text unit. I need to create a new text unit and it has to have a document type of glossary. This is the important part in all of this. Text unit, document type, glossary. The name of this is going to be my glossary term. So in this case, I'm going to give it a term of Apple. Okay, so I do that, create that text unit. It creates it within that folder. That's my glossary entry. I've got my glossary term in here. The definition I put in the description of that. So here, this is my glossary definition. Apple is a type of fruit. And that's it. That is my glossary entry now created. And that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. I can now create all of my other terms or I can import them or whatever else. But that's basically creating a glossary. Now, how do we apply that to our content? So under training delivery, which is my effectively my golden client area, um, I have got a single book page that has not much in it, but it has the term Apple, which we just created our glossary entry for. It also has pineapple. Notice that we'll come back to that in a second. So to apply a glossary to my content, I can either select an individual object that I want to apply the glossary to, or I can select a whole group at whatever level I want to do that. I'm going to do it for all of my, in theory, productive content. Now, tools, glossary, apply glossary. It asks me what glossary I want to use. This field, use glossary from group. So here I've got to select a group. So I go into here and I select my glossary group. This is another good reason for calling it glossary. It's obvious what we're selecting. Select that group, click OK. There's a bunch of options here to say what it should apply to and how deep it should go into doing that. I'm just going to leave those as they are for now. Click OK and that will churn through and it will apply that glossary to all of the content. So anywhere you have a glossary term that it knows about, which in this case is just Apple, it's going to create a pop up to the glossary definition. Um, easiest way to see that is if I go and display this now, if I display all of my content group options preview and in the browser I've got my one book page in here and you can see that I've now got a glossary term attached to this apple in here. When I hover over it you can see that the cursor now has a question mark by it to show it's a glossary term. I click on that and that's my glossary definition in a nice little pop up. I can close it here or just click away from it. Note that it has not pulled in the apple in pineapple. It will only pick up individual words or a phrase if you've got a phrase in there. So it won't pick up parts of words. That's something to watch out for. There is also no case sensitivity in SAP Enable now, which I don't like, but that's the product as it stands. And that's it. That is how to create a glossary. That's how to apply a glossary. If I suddenly decide that I don't actually want that on my content or on selective content, I can go to Tools, Glossary and Remove Glossary and that will basically back all of those out and remove those hyperlinks. Now, one last thing I will show you about a glossary. Um, as well as being able to have these glossary terms on a pop-up and whether that is in um, the trainer, in Desktop Assistant or wherever else, in books, book pages, simulations, whatever, um, as well as having that, I can actually include the glossary in the trainer or player, depending on what you call it, for reference as well. It's kind of hidden, so you're probably going to need to tell the users where it is, but that is fairly easy to do as well. What I need to do is under resources, playback settings, there is a setting that I need to set in here. Under library, 
glossary, this setting here, glossary group. This is where again I need to select my glossary or the glossary that I want to include in my trainer. So I'm going to select that, um, click OK and now what will happen if I go back to here and I do the same thing of displaying my content, I'm just going to preview it again from here. I've got exactly the same content in here, I've got my sample book page with my glossary terms in it here. But under this icon in the top left, I've now got a glossary entry and I click on that and that gives me my glossary. All of my glossary entries are in here, um, organized by letter or whatever other grouping I've got in here. If I click on A's, I'll see A's all the way down. If I click on B's, I'll see the B's, etc. Um, click on glossary, I'll see everything in alphabetical order, actually in the order it's got them here. But this is a great reference for users as well. So if they just want to see what a term means that they've come across, um, but it's not hyperlinked or whatever, they can always come to here and find it. So again, that's super easy. And that's pretty much all there is to know about glossaries. Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for listening.